Hello everyone, this is part 7 on how to make a tower defense game in Scratch. In this tutorial, I'll be fixing some turret bugs, and I will also begin creating a money system and make the turrets purchasable. If you haven't seen parts 1 through 6 yet, check them out, links are in the description below. Anyways, let's get started. So first off, I want to fix a turret issue, where if I click my mouse and then hover over the turret, then as you can see, I only drag the turret range but not the turret itself. So to fix this, I'm going to go inside of the turret sprite. And inside this code right here is where the issue occurs. So I'm just going to rewrite some of these blocks. So instead of this if touching mouse pointer and mouse down, I'm going to first take this out and take this and out. And then instead of this, I'm going to just have if touching mouse pointer. And then I'm going to drag this inside of the forever loop. And I'm going to go to control and grab another if and then put it inside of the if touching mouse pointer. And then I'm going to check if mouse down. Then I'm going to first set mouse action to selected. And oh yeah, I'm actually going to change these two ifs into if else. So I'm going to drag an if else and then drag this touching mouse pointer inside of the if and then take this if out and then drag it back in. And I'm going to do the same thing for this if mouse down. So I'm going to drag an if else, drag this mouse down inside of the if, and then take this set mouse action to selected inside of the if, and take out this block. All right, so I'm going to drag this back inside of the if touching mouse pointer. And now inside of the else, we actually want to set the mouse action to none, because of course, if the mouse isn't hovering over the turret icon, then we don't want to select the turret. And then inside of the else in the if mouse down, I'm going to check if the mouse action is equal to selected. So grab the mouse action equal to selected. And then I'm going to drag this inside of the else. Then I'm going to do pretty much all of this. So I'm actually going to create a new block just to make this more organized. So I'm going to go to my blocks and create a new block. And then I'll call this something like uh, place turret. All right, and then I'll click OK. And then I'll drag all of this inside of the place turret and drag the place turret block from the custom blocks into the if mouse action is equal to selected. All right. And I think I'm going to take out this wait until touching mouse pointer and not mouse down and drag this to the very bottom. And I'm also going to take out this and and just have wait until mouse down. So pretty much we just reorganized all of the if touching mouse pointer and mouse down code. And now it should work. And actually, I'm going to test this in the project page because in the editor, I can drag stuff around, which I don't want. So I'm going to go to project, and then I'm going to test it here. So now if I hold down my mouse and hover over the turret, then as you can see, the range does not follow. And if I buy a turret, then everything should work. And now there shouldn't be any more bugs with the turret. All right, cool. And you might have seen that I was able to place this turret over the turret icon, but I will be fixing this issue in the next video when I begin creating a shop. But anyways, now that we have fixed the turret problem, let's begin creating a money system. So first off, I'm going to go inside of the enemy sprite, and I'm going to create a new variable. So variables, make a variable, and I'll call this uh, cash, and then I'll leave it for all sprites, and then I'll click OK. And inside of the enemy sprite, I'm going to first set the cache to, let's say, 100 when the flag is clicked. So I'm going to drag this right before the wait until wave equals to 1. All right. And now we have our cache variable that is set to 100. And of course, we don't just want a plain cache variable, so I'm going to create a new number counter that is similar to the wave number number counter. So I'm going to right click and duplicate the wave number sprite. 
All right, so I'm going to call this one, uh, let's say, cache counter. And then instead of the wave variable, I'm going to replace these with cache. So if digits is greater than length of cache, then hide. Else show and switch costume to letter digits of cache. And I also want to show the cache counter right when the flag is clicked. So I actually don't want this wait until wave equals to 1. All right. And lastly, our cache is probably going to go up to the thousands or maybe tens of thousands. So we're definitely going to need to have more than three digits. So just to play it safe, I'm going to repeat 10, which means that the cache variable creates 10 clones of itself for up to 10 digit numbers. OK, so now that we have the cache counter, let's try it out. And right now, it's positioned right over here. However, I think I'm going to move this cache variable uh, maybe down under the start wave button. So I'm just going to play around with this number inside of the X and this number inside of the Y. So I'm going to try X of negative 200 and Y maybe like 120. OK, so let's try it again. And all right, it needs to be to the left a bit more. So maybe X negative 220. Um, okay, a bit more than that. So x negative uh, 240. All right, maybe 238. And I think that aligns pretty well with the button. But oh yeah, I actually want to add a dollar sign in front of this number. So I'm going to go inside of the wave text sprite, and I'm going to create a new costume. And then I'm just going to type the dollar sign. All right, and I'll center this. And then inside of the code, um, let's see. So first, I'm going to go to looks and switch costume to costume one. So the original sprite is going to be the wave text. And then I'm going to go to control and drag a create clone of myself. And then the clone is going to be the dollar sign. So inside of the clone, I'm going to show and then switch costume to costume two. And for the positioning, let me just first drag a go to x, y block. And then I'm going to try something like x negative 200 and y uh, 120. And OK, so I think it should be to the left a bit more. So x negative 230 maybe negative 220, uh, 225. And all right, I think this is pretty good. And lastly, let's go inside of the cache counter sprite and then update this x value. So let me try negative 220. OK, maybe to the left a bit more. So negative 225. And all right, cool. So I think this looks pretty good. And now we have the in-game cache counter. So if I just right-click this cache variable and change it to slider, then as you can see, it updates correctly. So now I can hide the cache variable. And of course, now we want the enemy to drop cache when it's destroyed. So let's go to the enemy sprite. So inside of the if enemy is dead or touching edge, then I'm going to first take this out of the forever loop, and then I'm going to separate these two. So I'm going to grab an if, and then I'm going to drag one more and put it right after. And then I'm going to take this out and drag the if enemy progress equals to dead inside of the first if, and if touching edge in the second if. All right. And now what I'm planning to do is that I'm going to make the enemy run this code in both of these ifs. However, I'm only going to make the enemy increase the cache variable if it's destroyed by the turret, but not if it reaches the end of the map. So to do that, I'm going to make this under a custom block. So I'm going to go to my blocks and create a new block. And I'll call this something like enemy destroyed. All right. And then I'm going to drag this under the enemy destroyed block. And I'm going to drag these two ifs inside of the forever loop. 
And then if the enemy is dead, then I'm going to drag the enemy destroyed block. And if the enemy is touching the edge, then I'm going to also drag the enemy destroyed block. All right. And lastly, we can just go to variables and grab a change cache by one inside of the if enemy is dead. All right. And now that was a pretty simple feature to add. So if we try it out, then we start with 100 cache. And then if we destroy enemies, then as you can see, our cache goes up. All right, cool. And now let's see if the enemies go to the edge of the map, then what happens? So as you can see, once they go to the edge of the map, then the cache does not go up. All right, cool. So it seems like everything works for the enemy and the cache. So now the next thing to do is that we want the turrets to actually cost money because right now we can place the turrets and the cache does not go down. So to fix this, let's go to the turret sprite and inside the part where we place the turret, we want to check. So grab an if, and then we want to check if we have a certain amount of cash. So I'm just going to say that the turrets cost 50 cash. So I'm going to grab an operator and then grab a not and check if not cash is less than 50. So cash less than 50, which means that if we have 50 or more cash, then of course we want to place turret and also change cash by negative 50. All right, so now if we try it out, every time we place a turret, then as you can see, it costs 50 cash. And right now we can only place two because we have no more cash. All right, so it seems to work. We can't place any more. And yeah. And now one last thing I want to fix is that right now you can only earn cash by defeating enemies. However, the enemies don't really give you that much cash and each turret costs a lot. So I'm thinking of giving the player some extra cash at the end of every wave. So to do that, I'm going to go inside of the uh, start wave button and then I'm going to go inside of events and grab a broadcast and broadcast a new message. And then I'll call this something like finished wave. All right. And then every time all of the enemies are done spawning and there are no enemies left on the screen, then of course the wave is finished. So I'm going to broadcast finished wave inside of here. And then inside of the same sprite, I'm going to drag a when and receive finished wave. Then I'm going to go inside of the variables and of course change the cache. So change cache. And I'm going to say at the end of every wave, we're going to give the player 25 cash. And now let's try it out. So as you can see, we start with 100 and then we can place two turrets. And once all the enemies are destroyed, we should have 25 extra and we do. All right, cool. Let's try the same thing for wave two. All right, can't place a turret yet but now I can, all right. And then at the end of this wave, then we get 25 cash. So now we have a working cash system and turret purchasing system. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe too, if you haven't already. In the next video, I'll begin creating an open and closed shop system and begin working on enemy health bars. By the way, this project is shared on my Scratch profile. Link is in the description below. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. See ya!